From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Well, praise ye the Lord. Oh, praise ye the Lord. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Oh, yes. And that is what we are here for, isn't it? Welcome to the reading of the Word of God on this August 29. August 29. Can you believe it? I almost can't get the word September out of my mouth. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I love summer. I'm hanging on. <clears throat> anyway. We are here and we are grateful, aren't we? We are grateful and thankful to our wonderful Lord and Savior <clears throat> who has seen us through the night, seen us through the night to the morning light. And we are able, free to gather. And so that's a great thing. Praise God. All right, on this August 29, we are still enjoying ourselves in the book of Job, Eov, and uh, we will finish up here the last words that Job has to say, okay? <clears throat> Job chapter 31, Job 31. I, Job, have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? Now that's a good phrase. Job settled that matter with himself. And he calls it a covenant. Praise God. People need to hear that today because you will love walking in that covenant with the Lord. And he will help you not to be tempted. The old saying that we used to say that grass is greener on the other side of the fence it never proves out to be true. It might look like it for a while, but it has its bite too. And so Job continues, For what is the allotment of God from above and the inheritance of the Almighty from on high? <clears throat> is it not destruction for the wicked and disaster for the workers of iniquity? Does he not see my ways? and count all my steps? And the answer to that is yes, the Lord is aware of all of our steps. If I have walked with falsehood, or if my foot has hastened to deceit, let me be weighed on honest scales, that God may know my integrity. If my step has turned from the way, or my heart walked after my eyes, or if any spot adheres to my hands, then let me sow and another eat. Yes, let my harvest be rooted out. If my heart has been enticed by a woman, or if I have lurked at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind for another. <clears throat> that is a very bold statement and let others bow down over her. For that would be wickedness. Yes, it would be iniquity deserving of judgment. For that would be a fire that consumes to destruction and would root out all my increase. If I have despised the cause of my male or female servant, when they complained against me, what then shall I do when God rises up? Very good question. Looking into the future of how we are leading our lives. Is it bringing us 
to righteousness. And we need to quite often take account of our lives and our thoughts and our words and the people that we are with, shouldn't we? So Job says, what then shall I do when God rises up? When he punishes, how shall I answer him? Did not he who made me in the womb make them? Did not the same one fashion us in the womb? And the answer is yes. There's no other answer for that. Every baby, every person ever born was born out of the womb of a woman, right? Except we could say, well, what about God? How did he come, right? We want to question that. But if I have kept the poor from their desire or caused the eyes of the widow to fail or eaten my morsel by myself so that the fatherless could not eat of it, <clears throat> but from my youth, I reared him as a father, and from my mother's womb, I guided the widow. If I have seen anyone perish for a lack of clothing, or any poor man without covering, if his heart has not blessed me, and if he was warmed with the fleece of my sheep, if I have raised my hand against the fatherless, when I saw I had help in the gate, then let my arm fall from my shoulder. Let my arm be torn from the socket. For destruction from God is a terror to me. And because of his magnificence, I cannot endure. If I have made gold my hope or said to find gold, you are my confidence. If I have rejoiced because my wealth was great and because my hands had gained much, if I have observed the sun when it shines or the moon moving in brightness so that my heart has been secretly enticed and my mouth has kissed my hand, this also would be an iniquity deserving of judgment. For I would have denied God, who is above. If I have rejoiced at the destruction of him who hated me, or lifted myself up when evil found him. Indeed, I have not allowed my mouth to sin by asking for a curse on his soul. If the men of my tent have not said, who is there that has not been satisfied with his meat? But no sojourner had to lodge in the street. For I have opened my doors to the traveler. If I have covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding my iniquity in my bosom because I feared the great multitude and dreaded the contempt of families, so that I kept silence and did not go out of the door or that I had one to hear me. <clears throat> Here is my mark. Oh, that the Almighty would answer me that my prosecutor had written a book. Surely I would carry it on my shoulder and bind it on me like a crown. I would declare to him the number of my steps. Like a prince, I would approach him. If my land cries out against me and its furrows weep together, if I have eaten its fruit without money or caused its owners <clears throat> to lose their lives, then let the thistles grow instead of wheat and weeds instead of barley. And the words of Job are ended. Wow. That's an awful lot in that reading. <clears throat> I pray that you will go back over it for yourself and just see what Holy Spirit speaks to you. 
We move right along to chapter 32. So these three men ceased answering Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. And then the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Busite of the family of Ram, was aroused against Job. His wrath was aroused because he justified himself rather than God. Also against his three friends, friends his wrath was aroused because they had found no answer and yet had condemned Job. Now, because they were years older than he, Elihu had waited to speak for Job, to Job. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, his wrath was aroused. So Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite, he answered and said, I am young in years and you are very old. Therefore, I was afraid and I dared not declare my opinion to you. I said, age should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. Great men are not always wise, nor do the aged always understand justice. Therefore, I say, listen to me. I also will declare my opinion. Indeed, I waited for your words. I listened to your reasonings while you searched out what to say. I paid close attention to you, and surely not one of you convinced Job or answered his words. Lest you say we have found wisdom, God will vanquish him, not man. Now he has not directed his words against me, so I will not answer him with your words. They are dismayed and answer no more. Words escape them. And I have waited because they did not speak, because they stood still and answered no more. I also will answer my part. I too will declare my opinion, for I am full of words. The spirit within me compels me Indeed, my belly is like wine that has no vent. It is ready to burst like new wineskins. I will speak that I may find relief. I must open my lips and answer. Let me not, I pray, show partiality to anyone, nor let me flatter any man, for I do not know how to flatter else my maker would soon take me away. But please, Job, hear my speech and listen to all my words. Now I open my mouth, my tongue speaks in my mouth, my words come from my upright heart, my lips utter pure knowledge. The spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. If you can answer me, set your words in order before me. Take your stand. Truly, I am as your spokesman before God. I also have been formed out of clay. Surely no fear of me will terrify you, nor will my hand be heavy on you. Surely you have spoken in my hearing, and I have heard the sound of your words saying, I am pure without transgression. I am innocent, and there is no iniquity in me. Yet he finds occasions against me. He counts me as his enemy. He puts my feet in the stocks. 
He watches all my pants. Look, in this you are not righteous, I will answer you. For God is greater than man. Why do you contend with him? For he does not give an accounting of any of his words. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and he seals their instruction in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Oh, doesn't he though? Man is also chastened with pain on his bed and with strong pain in many of his bones so that his life abhors bread and his soul succulent food. His flesh wastes away from sight and his bones stick out which once were not seen. Yes, his soul draws near the pit and his life to the executioners. If there is a messenger for him, a mediator, one among a thousand to show man his uprightness, then he is gracious to them, to him, and he says, deliver him from going down to the pit. Oh, yes. Have you ever thought about that? I mean, truly thought about that? That perhaps your life and the, what you were doing was leading you to hell instead of heaven? It's a good question to ask once in a while. And so this young man says, deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be young like a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray to God and he will delight in him. He shall see his face with joy. For he restores to man his righteousness. And then he looks at men and he, and he says, I have sinned and perverted what was right, and it did not profit me. He will redeem his soul from going down to the pit, and his life shall see the light. Behold, God works all these things twice, in fact, three times with a man to bring back his soul from the pit, that he may be enlightened with the light of life. Give ear, Job. Listen to me. Hold your peace, and I will speak. If you have anything to say, answer me. Speak, for I desire to justify you. If not, listen to me. Hold your peace, and I will teach you wisdom. That's what the youngest of these people sitting together has to say. Hang on, because we're going to get to the place where God shows up, and he has his say. Woo! We move right along now to the New Testament, and we are in, oh my, we are blessed, aren't we, to be reading 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and Paul starts off, do we begin again to commend ourselves, or do we need, as some others, epistles of 
commendation to you or letters of commendation from you. You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses, Moshe, because of the glory of his countenance. Remember, he, the, being in the presence of God, he came down and glory was just beaming from his face. Which glory was passing away after he left him how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains <laughs> is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away, but their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. The veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. And we see that today, don't we? Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, liberty. But we all with unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, we are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. Oh, it's so true, it's so true. I mean, we need to ask ourselves, are we growing in the Lord? I mean, truly, are we growing? Are we kind of sinking back into the world and not making him our priority? I need to ask myself, am I truly making Jesus, worshiping him, my priority? Are you? Have you checked that out lately? Have you checked out a whole week's time of life? What was it filled with? Did Jesus have your first amount of time? Worship 
adoration, reading of his word, seeking him even more, going over our lives and saying, well, you know, I'm a little bit weak here or I'm pretty strong here. I mean, we need to take honest accounts for the word of God says to us, if we will judge ourselves, we will not be judged. Hallelujah. Okay. All good thoughts. We move right along to Psalm 43. Psalm 43. And David cries, Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the opposition of the enemy? Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. And then I will go to the altar of God, to God, my exceeding joy. And on the harp, I will praise you. Oh God, my God, why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Oh, David is, is thinking and praying and singing and worshiping himself happy. And he is in a sinking situation at this time. And so he's calling out to God. And, you know, we don't want to go through all kinds of trials, but the trials are what bring us to him, keep us to him, keep us from getting prideful and lazy of spirit. We need some things that kind of poke us and cause us to truly make the effort to draw unto him, don't we? All right, let's wrap it up <clears throat> with Proverbs chapter 22, verses 8 and 9. Connie's been typing away, putting that on there for you, so you'll have it after I push off. Oh, I just love all of you, brothers and sisters. You are truly fabulous. You really make this reading of the Word of God come alive. Come alive. You send it out. You do so much. And I, re I recognize it. I come back. I want to say it again, because you might have not, not have heard me say this before. After the reading... I do a few things, I fill up my coffee cup again, and I sit down, and I read everything you put on here, and I pray, everything. So if you have prayer requests, see the problem is, I'm busy reading it, so I can't keep up. I mean, it can, the words keep moving up the page, and then I lose them. <laughs> it's only when I go back that I can review all of it. So please know from my heart today, I care about you, and I care and I pray for everything that you put on here. This is our little site, our little time, and it's magnificent because there's a lot of persecution against Bible-believing people, but the Lord has been gracious to us, hasn't he? All these years, oh my goodness, all these years, I don't even know how many it is anymore, but Let's wrap it up with Proverbs 22, 8 and 9. He who sows iniquity will reap sorrow. Uh, it's so true. Take this proverb to your heart and the rod of his anger will fail. It will fail. He who has a generous eye will be blessed for he gives of his bread 
to the poor. Oh, let's, let's take account and make sure we have generous eyes. Eyes that see way beyond ourselves. Eyes that are looking for someone that we could bless, that we could comfort, that we could pray for. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. It's the most exciting life there is. It truly is. Well, I want to bless you for being here, and we will wrap it up in prayer. Prayer with a capital P on the front of that word. So important. Precious Father God, we come to you in prayer first with thanksgiving, and we want to thank you, Lord, for being with us. We want to thank you, Holy Spirit, that you were here. I feel your presence. I feel the wonderful infilling from reading your word. Lord, your word is precious. It's glorious. It teaches. It comforts. It uplifts. It edifies. It brings us closer to you. And so, Lord, we come to you in prayer. And first off, we lift up Jerusalem. We pray for her peace. Oh, my, things are getting stirred up more and more in Israel. The enemy is really causing problems. And, and Israel is striking out striking out to preserve themselves. They don't want to. They don't want to. The Hebrew people do not want to have war. They do not have that in their hearts. They are grateful to be back in their land. So Lord, we're praying along with them for peace, peace, to reside up and down the streets, in and out of the homes, with everyone there, all the nationalities, all the places where they have been cast for many generations. They have come home and they are diligently learning Hebrew so that one language can prevail in that tiny country. There are languages and clothing and customs from all over the world. And it is you, it is you, wonderful Father God, who holds it all together, who causes them to have a heart for you through the Hebrew language. So we bless you, Lord, and we bless Israel. We bless Israel. We thank you that you bring most, most of the inventions that are, you have brought through your people. You have given them some kind of a little extra wisdom, extra knowledge. You have set them apart from all of the other people groups of the world. And you have declared over and over again in your word, these are my people. I chose them. I brought them out. Oh, Father God, give us a love for them. There are many ways that they have that could irritate us and cause us not to love them. We need to choose to love them through you, through your word. You have used them as your example to the rest of us. And we are grateful. Thank you, Lord. Be with the Knesset, the ruling body. Cause them to find your will and your way for his people. We bless you for that. Father God, we turn to America. And right now, <laughs> what, can, what can we say? The best way would be to pray in the Spirit and let the Spirit use us to pray with the Spirit's knowledge. But we will be in English. 
And so we lift up America. And Father God, we are grateful for this great country. I won't run down our country with all of her problems. I won't run her down. For you established America. You brought all those people from the foreign lands over stormy seas. Many of them never made it, lost their lives coming. But the ones that you preserved and, and allowed to walk on the shore, those original pioneers, thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for this incredible constitution. Lord, I, I have it. I have it in a small booklet form. And we, we are very ignorant today. We, we are very ignorant of our own constitution. There's very little that we can quote. And I encourage you in prayer. Get a hold of a copy. And keep it by your bedside, by your favorite chair, whatever. Pick it up often. Review it. There's so much in there. Father God, we want to thank you for that. It will never replace your word, but it has been a good guide for America. And so, Father, we cry out to you for America. We cry out. We know you say in your word, there's a time when the whole world will be against Israel. We have been her greatest friend. But with this present group, in Washington, D.C., they have walked away from that quite a bit. And so we want to remain the prayer warriors. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would speak with, you would be with those in authority, for you have allowed it. So, Lord, help us to be sweet in our nature and in our hearts toward you, knowing that you have more coming, but you have a glorious ending coming for the righteous, for those of us who live in you. So Lord, <clears throat> help us to know that our main, our main thrust in our lives should be to witness to other people to lead them to the Lord if we can, to pray with them, to care about them and where they are. Father God, please give us a heart. Give us a heart for all your people. For like we read, every one of them came through the womb of a woman. That was your doing, Lord. We did not set up the ways that mankind would keep on living and existing generation after generation. That is your glorious tribute that you are God. You are on the throne in heaven. And you do love us. Jesus, you paid our price for our sin. We want to thank you once again. We want to thank you. The price you paid. No one else has done that. And no one else is going to. But you cried, it is finished. And we live on that side of the cross. And we thank you. We give you praise and glory. I'd ask, Lord, <clears throat> that you would be with President Trump and Melania and Barron and their whole family. Keep angels around them, precious Lord, please. Angels all around them. Your plan is marching on. Father God, we hold up this precious little girl once again. Precious. A baby. A young baby. And Father God, little Charlotte, we hold her up to you. And we'd ask, Lord, that healing would continue within her little body, that good, healthy cells would multiply within her little systems this day. 
We're asking for a miracle, Lord, that you heal this child from the top of her little head to the soles of her little feet. Yes, we thank you, Lord. Lord, I'd like to lift up the people of Afghanistan, the people of Israel, the people of Ukraine. Mm, a lot of things going on with Ukraine. Dig and search a little bit about it. Hold up all of the people of America. Precious Lord, we'd ask that you would bless your people. We'd ask, Lord, for a great revival of your word, a great revival to not only cross all over America, but Lord, all over the world, all over the world an increase of witnessing and rejoicing in you that people who have tried all the other answers they can think of will come to you for you are the answer you are the only answer and you've already paid the price oh hallelujah to the lamb we thank you lord we are full of gratitude to start this new day. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift you up in his countenance and give you his peace. Have a great day. I love you all. Bye-bye.